Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike Palmer, certified financial planner and founder of Arc Royal Wealth Management. Today we're exploring a retirement planning topic that might surprise you. Can your Monte Carlo probability actually be too high? If you've done any sort of retirement planning, you're probably familiar with Monte Carlo rates. They're a measuring stick financial planners use to determine whether you might outlive your money. Stick around as we discuss why too high a Monte Carlo may not lead to the best retirement and how we help clients think about Monte Carlo so they can enjoy a more fulfilling retirement. And be sure to watch to the end where we look at a case study, a newly retired couple looking at two different expenses of the same amount, but that result in different success rates. Before we dive in, I want to share a quick story. My friend Eddie is a big outdoorsman, and he often goes on wilderness hikes where he's in the backcountry for three or four days at a time. I recently asked him how he prepares for these trips. Eddie shared that there's always a trade-off involved. If conditions might be difficult, or if he's going deep in the wilderness, he overpacks, bringing more food than necessary and gear for every conceivable situation. The advantage is you're extremely prepared, but the weight of the pack is so heavy that it slows you down and it can be difficult to enjoy the journey. Eddie and his wife recently hiked the Camino de Santiago in Spain, which is a different sort of hike. His backpack was much different, and while he had the essentials and some extras for comfort, he didn't pack for every possible situation. Since his pack was lighter, he was able to move faster, see the sights, and generally enjoy the journey more. So what does this have to do with Monte Carlo probability, you might ask? Well, as it turns out, a lot. Conventional wisdom says aim for the highest success rate possible, right? Well, maybe not. Think about someone with a Monte Carlo probability of 96% versus someone with the exact same assets and age who has a Monte Carlo probability of 85%. Both strategies are on track to succeed, but one may sacrifice enjoyment while the other balances security with living more fully. We think there's a trade-off between security and quality of life, and that's where the art of retirement planning comes into play. It's more than just numbers. The thing about Monte Carlo is it doesn't provide any qualitative insight. It can't analyze the enjoyment you get from travel, hobbies, or activities that give you joy. While an extremely high success probability might sound great, it could mean that you're being unnecessarily frugal. And you don't want to miss out on experiences that you could actually afford. We believe in balancing financial security with quality of life. Retirement satisfaction isn't just about money. It's about living well, too. Now, let's talk about a key difference in how expenses affect your Monte Carlo results. And we're going to look at an example. Al and Abby Parker have about $2 million. They're retiring this year, and as you can see, their proposed plan has an 89% success rate. They're considering a couple of additional expenditures in retirement, a $100,000 home renovation or spending $10,000 a year over the next 10 years on overseas travel. The home renovation is an immediate reduction in portfolio assets. So from a Monte Carlo perspective, having your nest egg immediately reduced by $100,000 means missing out on the potential growth of that money. One additional consideration that Monte Carlo can't capture is that the travel cost is spread over 10 years, so there's some flexibility associated with that. You could adjust the amount or even suspend it for a year or two if market conditions were dramatically lower than expected. And while both expenses total $100,000, they result in different Monte Carlo success rates. As you can see, the home renovation lowers the Monte Carlo to 83%. And if we replace the home renovation 
with overseas travel, the Monte Carlo is 85%. These scenarios feel and look different, but which is better? Well, that depends on you. If you've made adjustments to your retirement spending to enhance your quality of life, be sure to share your story in the comments. So, how do you find the right balance? Here are some things to consider. Set a target range for success probability and not focus on a single number. Build flexibility into your plan. And finally, regularly review and adjust your strategy. Everyone's risk tolerance and goals are different. That's why at Arc Royal, we focus on aligning the sustainability of your retirement journey with your personal comfort level and lifestyle goals. For clients who are near or in retirement, we review and update their financial plan, including their Monte Carlo, every year. We also do an annual tax projection because the tax landscape is constantly changing, as we've recently seen with the big, beautiful bill. To use another hiking example, a map doesn't show the terrain or the weather, both of which can change over time and impact your journey. We've helped hundreds of people just like you achieve a successful retirement. Think of us as your guide or Sherpa, helping you navigate the complexities of retirement, making your journey safer and more enjoyable. So to recap, fixating on the highest Monte Carlo rate possible probably isn't the right approach for most people. A slightly lower success rate might actually lead to a more fulfilling retirement. It's all about finding the right balance for you. If you found this video helpful, Give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more retirement planning tips. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. If you'd like to learn more about the benefits of working with a truly independent and objective fee-only financial advisor, we welcome the opportunity to talk with you.